In today's lesson, I'm going to teach you 50 great pieces of vocabulary and phrases you can use every day to speak about schedules and appointments in English. It's nice to have all of these in one place, this lesson, because all of these are super common. On my blog, I have a list of 50 questions you can answer to help you review today's lesson. And at the end of this lesson, can you let me know in the comments which of these were new for you? I'd really love to know. My name's Arnell, let's start. First things first, schedule or timetable, number one and number two. If we're speaking about a chart, a chart with the times for buses, trains, or even lessons, schedule is more common in American English and timetable is more common in British English. If you're curious, I'm American. But if we're just speaking about our work or things we need to do, schedule is the more common word. Tomorrow, I'll be very busy. I have a tight schedule. If you have a tight schedule, you have lots of things to do, but not much time. Next week, my schedule will be pretty tight. If you have a lot of things to do, what can help you remember to do these things? You can use a planner. A planner can be a physical book. It can also be an app. Or maybe you can use a wall planner. Let me know in the comments. Do you use a planner? I personally don't. Um, I just put important dates in my phone. Which is kind of like using a planner. Okay, let's look at work schedules. You can have a fixed work schedule, a flexible work schedule, or you can have shifts. If you have a fixed work schedule, your schedule never changes. For example, you can work Monday to Friday, nine to five. If you have a flexible work schedule, you can choose when you work. If you have shifts, your schedule changes every day, week, or month. If we go back to having a fixed work schedule, nine to five, those working hours are so common, it has become an adjective. Many people who work in an office have a nine to five job. I don't want a nine to five job. What type of jobs have a flexible work schedule? Mm, people who are self-employed. If you are self-employed, you are your own boss. You don't have a boss. You can say, I am self-employed or I work for myself. My friend Chris is an electrician. He is self-employed. He works for himself. What type of jobs have shifts? Maybe doctors or nurses? Mm, waiters or waitresses? Mm, so maybe a nurse might have the morning shift for one week and then the night shift for the next week. With all of these, you can work full-time or you can work part-time. Full-time is about 40 hours a week. Part-time, mm, part-time, that depends. Maybe 15 hours a week? And this can also be used for studying. She is a full-time student. He is a part-time student. Let me know in the comments below, what type of work schedule do you have? I have a flexible work schedule, which is great because I have three little kids. I am self-employed. 
I work for myself and I work full time. If we're not speaking about a person's work schedule, but places like stores, restaurants, banks, libraries, we can use opening hours. Our opening hours are Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. Excuse me, what are your weekend opening hours? We can say opening hours or opening times, business hours, same thing. And lots of times on a website, you might just see hours. Welcome to Richmond Accounting. At Richmond Accounting, everyone has a nine to five job. They have a fixed work schedule. But during the height of the COVID pandemic, everyone worked alternate days. This means group A worked Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Group B worked Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. When we use alternate, the adjective, this means one day yes, one day no, one day yes, one day no. And it's not only for work schedules. Mm. I exercise on alternate days. I run one day, then I take a break. I run one day, then I take a break. My sister made this amazing cake with alternate layers of chocolate crepes and cream. It was to die for. Alternate is the adjective, but we can also use the verb alternate. When I exercise, I alternate between cardio and yoga. That's not true. I hate cardio. Listen to the pronunciation, the adjective. Alternate, alternate, alternate. The verb, alternate, alternate, alternate. So you can have alternate shifts, or maybe you have a staggered work schedule. A staggered work schedule? Let me show you. In this school, there are 500 students. If everyone arrived at 845, it would be a zoo. So grades one through three arrive at 845 and leave at 315. Grades four through six arrive at nine and leave at 330. Grades seven and eight arrive at 915 and leave at 345. Arrive is a perfect verb to use but informally, we can say show up, same thing. My bus showed up 20 minutes late. It arrived 20 minutes late. Leia didn't show up on Tuesday. Maybe she was sick? Anyway, the arrival times are staggered. If times are staggered, the start times are different. Stagger can be an adjective or a verb. We staggered break times so the cafeteria doesn't get overwhelmed. And you can see this shape, right? We can use the verb or adjective in other situations. These race lanes are not staggered. These race lanes are staggered. Okay. Imagine I work at a supermarket called Sam's Super Buy. On Thursday and Friday, my colleague Benny won't be at work. He will be away for two days. He will be off for two days. When someone is away or off, they are not present at work. But these two are slightly different. If someone is away, they are just not in the workplace. This could be because of a vacation or they're just not there. For example, Mara is away on maternity leave. 
Christine is away on a business trip. If someone is off, it really is her own personal free time, usually because you want to rest and relax. Next month, I'll be off for two weeks. I'm going to Hawaii. <sighs> anyway, Benny won't be at work, so I will need to cover for him. If you cover for someone, you do that person's job because they are away or off. Can you please cover for me tomorrow? I have an appointment. No, sorry, I've already covered for you three times this month. At Sam's Super Buy, I normally only work the morning shift from 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. But because I need to cover for Benny, I will also work the afternoon shift from 1 to 6. Back-to-back -back shifts are always tiring. If you have back-to-back -back shifts, back-to-back -back lessons, back-to-back -back appointments, you need to do these things one after the other without a break. And a break is a time for you to rest at work. Every day I have a 10-minute morning break and a 45-minute lunch break. Common mistake! It's a break, not a rest or a pause. I taught four English classes back to back. Doctor, I have back to back patients all morning. Adjective or adverb. We usually only use back to back when we're speaking about things to do with time, like appointments, lessons. You wouldn't say, Hmm, I ate three cookies back to back. Yeah, that's not, um, that wouldn't be very natural at all. So let's say you are a doctor and you do have back to back patients all morning. Mm, from 7 to 10, you need to see nine patients. If you work faster than your appointment times, you are ahead of schedule. If you are slower than the appointment times, for whatever reason, you are behind schedule. And this can be for anything. The construction project is two months ahead of schedule. They're working very quickly. The construction project is six months behind schedule. That's going to get pretty expensive. So back-to-back -back shifts are tiring. But on Friday, I am booked in for a facial and a massage. If you are booked in for something, this means you have the appointment. You have the time and the date. A receptionist could tell you, okay, you're booked in for a dental checkup on the 9th. Booked in for something. Ooh, my phone. Hello? Hi, is this Arnell? Yes, speaking. This is Kathy from the Palm Oasis, and I'm afraid we need to cancel your appointment this Friday. Oh, can I reschedule the appointment? Yes, you can do that on our website. But I'm talking to you now. Sorry, all appointments have to be booked through our website. Go to our calendar and choose a time slot that works for you. Okay, thank you. Bye. Okay. Cancel, reschedule, time slot works for you. If you cancel an appointment, or you cancel a lesson, or cancel a flight, you end it. No more. Can I please cancel our next lesson? 
if you reschedule something, you move it to a new date because there was a problem with the original date. We need to reschedule our next two lessons. Time slot. Hmm. Basically, a slot is a thin space like this. For coins in a vending machine, you have a slot. Or a mailbox slot. You can see that slot shape. Nowadays, schedules can look like this, right? Lots of slots. You can choose a time slot to book your appointment. I looked at your online calendar, but I couldn't find a free slot. And yes, I did wear these earrings for this lesson because they have that little slot shape. Works for you. If something works for you, this means it's okay for you. It's suitable. Planning a meeting. Does Monday work for you? Sorry, Monday doesn't work for me. What about Tuesday? Does that work for you? <laughs> it looks like the Palm Oasis is fully booked. We can say it's fully booked or completely booked. This means there are no free slots. We can say free slots or more formally available slots. If I were a therapist, for example, I could say I have one available slot next Tuesday. Does that work for you? Okay, we spoke a lot about appointments, but what happens if you don't have an appointment? What happens if you just walk into a business? Outside a hair salon, you might see this sign. Walk-ins welcome. A walk-in is a person, a person who enters a business without an appointment. An appointment isn't necessary. Walk-in can also be an adjective. Maybe at a doctor's clinic, you might see this. Our walk-in hours are Monday and Tuesday from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. This is clear. After 9 a.m., you need an appointment. Oh, my phone again. Hello. Hi, Arnell. This is Kathy again from the Palm Oasis. Hello. We just had a last minute cancellation. We could squeeze you in on Friday at 8.30. Does that work for you? That would be great. Thank you. Okay. I'll book you in immediately so that slot doesn't get double booked. Thank you. That, that's great. Okay, see you Friday. Yeah, bye. 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 Last minute. Cancellation. Squeeze in. Double booked. A last minute cancellation. A last minute reservation. A last minute appointment. If something is last minute, it happens at the very last moment. It is unexpected. For example, restaurant owner. We had a last minute cancellation. Now we have a table for six available. Cancellation. Earlier we looked at the verb to cancel. Cancellation is the noun. Squeeze in. This is a really fun phrasal verb. First, what does squeeze mean? Hmm. You can squeeze a lemon. You can squeeze a bottle of sunblock. If we squeeze someone in, we have a very tight schedule, but we manage to find a little bit of time. Imagine my first client is from 3 to 3.30. I have another client from 4 to 4.30. I can squeeze in. One client at 3.30. Will I be working back to back? Yes. And this isn't only for people. 
I always try to squeeze in a workout during my lunch break. To be double booked. Whew, I know there's been a lot of vocabulary, but don't forget to head over to my blog and answer those questions. Those questions will really help you review today's vocabulary. To be double booked. I booked Angela in at three o'clock. I also booked Christine in at three o'clock. I double booked them. If you double book someone, you give two people the same appointment. And this is an accident. The airline double booked my seat. The good news was I was bumped up to first class. And with double booked, again, it's an accident. So I would not say, hmm, I have two students. I double booked them. No, that's just a lesson with two students. In this clip here, we see two people waiting for the same therapist. <clears throat> you waiting for somebody in there? Got an appointment there. Did she double book us? I'm usually Thursday, but I had to reschedule because of the holiday. You see those verbs, double book. Did she double book us? And reschedule. Hi, I have an appointment at 8.30. I know I'm a bit early. Early is good. We had a no-show, so we can start early. A no-show. A no-show is a person. A person kind of like a walk-in. A no-show is also a person. A person who doesn't come to their appointment. And we don't know why. No phone call, no message, no email. They are a no-show. My 12 o'clock student was a no-show. I hope he's okay. Okay, early, on time, late. If you are early, you arrive before the set time. I always like to arrive 10 minutes early. On time, at that specific time. My train left on time. All of my students today were on time. If you are late, you arrive past that set time. Sorry I'm late. The traffic was crazy this morning. Let me know in the comments. Are you normally early, on time, or late? I always like to be early. Um, and for me, on time is actually late. If I'm not early, I get a bit anxious. Hmm. On the 15th, the Palm Oasis is having a special event just for clients. Apparently there will be food and drinks. I'm not sure if I can make it, but I penciled it in my planner. If you can or can't make something, this means you can or can't attend. Unfortunately, Marissa can't make my birthday party. She'll be out of town. And if you pencil something in, you write something in your planner, but it's not definite yet. It's like using a pencil. If you want, you can easily erase it. It's not definite like using a pen and ink. I've penciled in the next three Wednesdays for our lessons, but I'll have to confirm this with you later. All right, I just received an invitation from the Palm Oasis. An invitation, invitation. An invitation is a card, an email, or as I'm sure you know, a link that invites you to join an event or attend a meeting. Food, music, drinks at the Palm Oasis, okay. You can bring a plus one, RSVP, ASAP. 
A plus one is a person you can bring to an event. It's like you plus one. Your plus one can be your partner or a friend. My mom was my plus one at the awards ceremony. RSVP. RSVP is an acronym. And like with most acronyms in English, we mainly see in written English. It's not really common in spoken English. This acronym stands for, it's French, it stands for Respond s'il vous plaît. I'm sure that wasn't the best pronunciation, but that's what it stands for. This means please reply. Please respond to this invitation. You need to RSVP by the 22nd. You need to tell me, are you coming or not? 20 people have already RSVP'd. Yes, informally, RSVP can be used as a verb. And with this acronym, it's only used for invitations to an event, not for day-to-day -day things. You wouldn't write someone an email. Did you get the message I sent you? RSVP. It doesn't work that way. Number 50. <sighs> Last one. A-S-A-P. So again, normally this is written, but when we're speaking, we could say ASAP. This acronym stands for as soon as possible, which means immediately. Don't wait. Call me ASAP. I need the information ASAP. Go to my blog and answer the questions ASAP. Subscribe to my channel ASAP. Leave me a comment down below ASAP. See you next time. Bye.